start of the second quarter. Elmer Reyes is in the ball game for the first time for the T.J. Hot Dog. Sector Calma slips, and Dean Tapumare takes the ball away. Oh. Up against B-Boy Ravanes. And a foul is going to be called on B-Boy. You know, this is the stage of a ball game wherein uh, teams want to usually make a run because usually you try to start and finish with your strongest five whenever you play a particular half. So now would be the best time for Pure Foods to try to expand its lead, especially uh, if they can give patrimon uh, so they can give Patrimonio or Codinera or Pumar in a couple of minutes rest mm -hmm. towards the end of this first half. Right now they have remained on the hard court for the TJ Hot Dogs. Dean Dupumarin gives them a four point lead at 22 to 18, but this has been the biggest lead so far, just four points. An indication of things to come. Yes. Hector Calma. Good pick there by Fernandez. He gets the ball back. And good positioning by Bibo Rabanes and a, another assist there for Mon Fernandez. Just a two-point lead again for the TJ Hot Dogs. Elmer Reyes coming out against Agustin. Patrimonio has Graves in front of him. It's probably going to be a foul on Hector Calma. Accidentally undercut Al as he went up for the shot. But you can see, one-on-one, -on -one, Patrimonio is going to have a field day against uh, more of the against more of the defenders of San Miguel Beer. That's why it's important for San Miguel to double team him. But in this case, Patrimonio cut over from the weak side, then just simply went around Graves and into the paint. And that left Kama trying to stop Alvin Patrimonio on that move. Patrimonio, however, gets his two gift shots to give the TJ Hot Dogs another four-point lead. One thing about the first quarter, Ed, is Pure Foods did not get... Oh. I think I'm not going to say anything for a while. Uh, Juan Fernandez certainly did his job finishing off that statement of yours. Oh, yes. <laughs> In mid-sentence. With emphasis. Yes. What do we have here? Looks like a three-second violation on Jerry uh -huh. Codinera. Might have had a foot in the paint. Field goal percentage. Actually, both teams had exactly the same number of attempts, but Pure Foods really shot better, especially from the outside in the first few minutes of the ball game, and that's why they have the slim lead. Juan Fernandez heading it off to Hector Cava from within his range. San Miguel is very effective when Fernandez is the hub of their half-court set. You know, Fernandez, of course, you can't back off against him because he has an outside shot. He can uh, take you strong to the hoop. And then the guards just simply cut around him in a pattern set by uh, Norman Black. And it's up to the other team to keep guessing where the ball is going to wind up. And uh, Fernandez will keep you guessing all night. Oh, yes. Meantime, we have Jerry Codinera earning some rest on the bench with the entry of Albert Kevin Ramos. One of their power acquisitions this year. Juan Fernandez kind of forced that one. Ramos gets it off to Dean Dupumaren. Forward pass to Albert Reyes. He likes this. Oh, yes, he does indeed. One of the premier fast break finishers. If for that alone, he has earned a great reputation. And here comes Boy Cabajo giving it to El Reyes. Good handoff, but Dito Pumara did not expect the pass. However, it will stay with the TJ Hot Dogs. Well, there the Pure Foods Hot Dogs were trying to be a bit too unselfish. You know, mm -hmm. there's such a thing in basketball, especially with a talent-laden team like Pure Foods. Fight for the rebound, won by Mon Fernandez. Ato Agustin now stepping on the gas pedal. Two shots for Agustin of the foul by Elmer Reyes, his first. Well, Elmer Reyes uh, let Agustin get past him, and it was up to Patrimonio try to be to try to be at the last line of defense. Mm -hmm. 
This is going to be an important substitution coming up after these free throws of Ato Augustin for Pure Foods. Dundai coming in for Dean de Bumare. That's what you were talking about? Oh, yes, exactly. You know, um, Juntan coming into the ballgame really changes the, the, the way Pure Foods executes. He's uh, not as good a fast break uh, point guard as Dean de Bumare is, although he is a bigger and stronger defensive guard. But uh, in a game like this, especially since we are tied, and uh, some of the starters some of San Miguel Beer have sat down. It would be important for Pure Foods to get a good run. Well, in the meantime, Jun Tan called off the bench, uh, lapses into this error after the double team was clamped down on him, a backing violation. And we are deadlocked at 26. That's something a lot of the teams in the PBA do. Whenever you come into the ballgame, make, sure, uh, make sure that you know what's going to happen. Or make yeah. sure you're alert to uh, the matchups and all that because the other team is going to go at you. But look at this guy, Ato Agustin. Talking about going at you. Yes. He just keeps on rolling along. Exactly. Boy, Kabahu. And now, the inside game of uh, Pure Foods is being tested by San Miguel Beer. In the first quarter, the outside shooting of Pure Foods carried them. But now, especially with uh, with Codiniera sitting down and uh, Jun Tan playing the point. It's going to be a test to see how well Pure Foods can play San Miguel inside at both ends of the floor. Mm -hmm. Foul Reyes. Elba Reyes in the meantime picks up foul number two. That is also the second team foul of the TJ Hot Dogs matching the team fouls committed by San Miguel so far. Well, I was going to make that point again, but Fernandez has the ball. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> point made. <laughs> well, actually, the point I've been trying to make every time he gets the ball is that uh, neither team has really gotten a lot of free throws in this ball game, and San Miguel Beer has had the advantage in that department. Here, they, thus far, they have a slight advantage, but that just goes to show that Pure Foods should be taking it stronger to the basket against them. At well, that time, Bibo Ravanes tried to take it strong but missed the shot. Boy Kabahu pulls up. Smart thing to do, you don't have the shot. Well, Fernandez there tapped the ball out of the hands of Ramos. Hector Camas inside on the run, he gets it. That's what's known as the Elgin Baylor principle. <laughs> you have a 10-foot shot, go in for an 8-footer. Mm -hmm. Elgin Baylor, of course, if uh, you weren't around that time, one of the greats in the NBA. Oh, actually, I meant Julius Irving. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mon Fernandez uh, had a hand in that particular scramble. Two seconds, shot clock. Only two seconds left for Pure Foods to shoot. Let's see what kind of play they have for the situation. Jun Tan snaps one off, and the buzzer goes off. The Cubs standing at 32 violation. 28, a four point lead for San Miguel Beer with seven minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Agustin misses, Vivo Ravanes, finally on the second try. Well, you see, in that play, Pure Foods gave up. They saw that Agustin had the shot, and they still didn't try to join the play. In uh, close games like this, especially with San Miguel Beer having taken the lead with a 6 to nothing run, you know, that is going to hurt you later on. And Agustin zigzagging his way to the front. But Jeffrey Graves got both Jun Tan and Boy Cabajo jumping. And the foul will be called. Um, foul, Boy Cabajo gets second personal in the Time. game. See Jeffrey Graves with a fake here. And Time he out. hammered. We have a timeout by the TJ Hot Dogs. Jeffrey Graves missing the first of his two free throws off that second personal foul by Boy Cabajo. So San Miguel still has a six-point lead at 34-28. You know, this quarter, San Miguel Beer has gotten 13 attempts at the basket already, and Pure Foods has only gotten six thus far, and that's one reason why. Another is that Pure Foods already has five turnovers in the period. San Miguel has just one. Pure Foods has to be more careful in uh, handling the basketball, and they have to box out more, especially off their defensive glass. 
Well, Bibo Irvanes and Jeffrey Graves, as well as Juan Fernandez, certainly have been getting their share of the offensive rebounds. He's got it. Ramas has also got it. And it's down to a five-point lead by San Miguel Pierre, 35, 36 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the second period. Hector Kalma slices through. Ramas with the rebound. Tight pass by Dindo Pumara to Glenn Capasso. And see how Pierpuj is doing the smart thing. They're not rushing things. They're mm -hmm. taking their time, finding a good shot. Now the other team missed a layup, but that doesn't mean you have to rush up and try to get one yourself. That time, Boy Cabal picking up the loose ball. And that's that's up. They had to take the shot. There were only three seconds on their shot yes. clock. Dindo Pumara realizes they have a fresh 25 second shot clock and sets up the play. And Capasso is going to be called for the offensive foul, offensive foul. as Capasso. he violated the airspace of uh, Ato Agustin. There you can see this is clear. He actually leans into uh -huh. Agustin and uses the outside hand to hit the glass. Pierfus has not hit any outside shots in this second quarter. And that is one reason why San Miguel Beer has been able to clamp down on them quite hard in this second period. Agustin drills in. And triple And the biggest lead in the ball game is up with an eight-pointer by the Beer men. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's important to get a good run. And that's going to be a backing violation. Oh, the session was not really contested. The doubt, and then the Pumara just chased it into his backcourt. Actually, you saw that he actually waited a yeah. while before trying to touch it. And the applause you heard can be interpreted uh, both ways for Samboy Lim and for Biboy Ravanes. He yes. did his own thing. They had stand on the hard court. A miss by Agustin. 4:52 to go in the second period. Eight-point lead by San Miguel at 38-30. Ramos posting up against Jeffrey Graves. Turn around, Jeffrey won't go, and Graves has a rebound. Now, Ramos was able to take that shot, thinking that Codinier would be under the basket for the rebound. Great pass for Graves, and surely going to make our top ten. Oh, yes, sir. We'll have that on our KP at the half. Top ten plays. And then an interview with Commissioner Ray Marquez, or... Yes, Commissioner Ray Marquez on the uh, meeting that the PBA board had last, or yesterday. And KP at the half will be emceed by the real Romy Quintana. <laughs> <laughs> Not the white extended version. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in our first game, I said Romy was going to do the KP at the half, and then Bill Velasco came on. Turnover okay. story. Romy doesn't feel insulted. I'm sure. <laughs> I hope you feel the same way. I'll tell you later. <laughs> A foul on Capasho. That will be his third. And Franz Pumarin is going to check back in, but probably for Otto Augustin, so he'll have to wait for the next dead ball situation. Pumarin well, is coming in for Hector Kalma. And we were just talking about uh, Commissioner Ray Marquez. There he is with June Bernardino and our boss man, uh, Mr. Ricky Velas, president of Vintage Enterprises. As always. Yes. In attendance here at the NASA. Well, look, now it's a double-digit advantage for San Miguel Beer, and uh, Nani de Mejilla is going to try to shore up the front line of uh, Pure Foods. You see, they're not really getting any offensive rebounds, so if they miss shots and they're being forced into some bad shots by San Miguel Beer and that's something that they have to address right away because this lead is going to get out of hand pretty soon. Oh well, boy, Cabajo certainly had to struggle for those two points inside. Grant Pumaran out to Fernandez and Fernandez realized it was a bad pass as soon as the ball left his hand. He wished there was a string <laughs> attached to the ball to filter that. Boy Cabajo with back-to-back -back hits, cuts the lead down to six. Three minutes and two seconds to go in the second period. Neither team has gotten into penalty in either of the 
first quarters. That will actually do well for Pure Foods, especially now. The Patrimonio has gotten an extended rest in this first half of play. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really in foul trouble. Jerry Codinier has an easy two points. Nice and easy does it for Jerry Codinier as he got the lead pass and an 8-2 to two run here by P.J. Hot Dogs has cut a 10-point lead by San Miguel to just four now at 42-38. Agustin wants to get it back, but that plan backfired. Well, you can see that that was not in uh, sync with the offense of San Miguel. Yeah, was, uh, the beer men were caught looking, and Norman Black wants to talk about that with his time. Hello, San Miguel Beer! Two minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the second quarter and TJ Hot Dogs catching up on the San Miguel Beer Squad. The Beer Men erected a 10 point lead earlier in this period, now cut down to four. A slip by Samboy Lim and Cabajo almost got away, but Alvin Teng and Nato Agustin were there. You know, in this uh, first half of play, the small men of uh, Pure Foods have really done their share. Wow, Even though their mission is trying to hit some shots from the outside, uh, Boy Cabajo, uh, Dindo Pumaren, and Glenn Capacho have really done a good job of stirring things up and making it difficult for San Miguel Beer to adjust on defense. On the other hand, Sam Boy Lim has been struggling in this ball game Capacho. from both ends of the court. Yes. He slipped twice, missed the all of his attempts, I believe, he has not scored in this ball game. He's only taken three attempts and missed all of them. No count on that shot as Dang. Alvin Dang was caught for his first personal foul. Both teams scored five team fouls so far with 2.07 remaining in the quarter. As we were talking about, each team wants to finish strong. And you see now... Uh, Patrimonio, Codiniera, and Pumarin are on the floor at the same mm -hmm. time for Pure Foods, and that's what we were talking about at the start of this period. They were able to get back into the game even without Patrimonio, and they're hoping for another run now that Alvin's back in the dying uh, minute and a half or so of this ball game. To try and rest the lead. Yes, Boy Cabal certainly has been trying, but that time the ball wouldn't drop. Art de la Cruz ahead of the pack, and he gets a top 24 fast break. A difficult one over and yeah, a fully extended Nani de Mejillo. By the way, Nani de Mejillo is in our top ten, and you'll see later. Okay, we'll watch out for that on KP at the half. 44-38, back to a six-pointer by San Miguel Beer. Tight pass to Jerry Codinera from Dean de Pumarin, but on the money. Now that's exactly what Pumarin does for Pure Foods. is able to spot the open men, and uh, you know you don't really have to wait for the ball to come to you. When Pumaren is the point guard, he really sees the floor very well. Well, the other Pumaren... Actually, I was talking about both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and a jumper from near left quarter. 46-40 is the count. Less than a minute remaining in the second quarter. Boy, Cabajo has been working extra hard inside, especially when the uh, double team comes. You know, Pure Foods has only hit one out of um, eight shots from the outside in this uh, second quarter of play, and that's why Cabal is trying to take it strong inside. And Danny De Vigilio gets a follow-up. Just a four-point lead for San Miguel Beer. Time down to 39 seconds here in the second period. Franz Pumara and getting around a pick by Alvin Tay. Now that was a difficult shot. Dindo Pumara gave him all he could handle and he still made the difficult long fall away. A back-to-back -back hits there by Franz Pumara. There's a four-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Yves Dignadise caught reaching in for well, his third Dignadise. personal foul in the game. There again, you see Patrimonio was uh, able to get Dignadice. away from Dignadice, and Dignadice has given three fouls, and not the type of fouls you'd like to give up. Yes. Now, these are fouls even before a shot is taken. Mm -hmm. 
and you catch the Gadiza trying to check his move the split second after he commits the foul knowing that he shouldn't have done that. Alvin Patrimonio has canned in all his four tries from the 4.5 meter line. Four seconds to go in the second quarter. Juan Fernandez forced to put it up and score it. A six-point lead for San Miguel Beer going into the halftime.